Alongside the cells that make up our bodies, there are trillions of microscopic organisms. It's not just the friendly bacteria in our guts that help us digest food. Bacteria live on our skin, in our mouths and in the vagina. And it's not just bacteria. We're home to populations of viruses, fungi and archaea too. When does this colonisation begin? Most scientists think we acquire our first bacteria when we're born, and before that, babies develop in a sterile environment. But recently, a few studies have found traces of bacterial DNA in the placenta and in the amniotic fluid that surrounds the fetus, as well as in meconium, a baby's first poo. Could this be evidence of bacteria living with us before birth? Maybe, but many scientists think these findings could be the result of contamination. There's an ongoing debate. Whatever the answer, everyone agrees that the first major colonisation occurs during and just after birth. Babies born by vaginal delivery get a dose of bacteria from their mothers as they pass through the birth canal. After birth, the baby acquires more microbes from the air and from contact with objects and people around her. As she grows, many factors influence the makeup of her microbiota, her diet, whether or not she takes antibiotics or other drugs, how many people she interacts with, whether she has pets, where she lives, and potentially also her genetic makeup. Children that live in rural areas surrounded by animals and dirt host different sets of microbes to children brought up in urban environments. If children aren't exposed to a wide variety of microbes, they seem to be more likely to develop autoimmune and allergic conditions such as asthma and eczema. This is known as the hygiene hypothesis and it's one example of how our microbiota influences our health throughout our lives. By adulthood, our bodies contain as many microscopic organisms as human cells, if not more. Our physiology relies on these communities for example, they protect us from harmful bacteria and help us digest food. As microbes break down food, they produce molecules called metabolites, which circulate in the bloodstream, reaching all tissues of the body and affecting our metabolism. A diverse community of gut microbes contributes to a healthy metabolism. A less diverse microbiota is associated with inflammatory bowel disease, obesity and type 2 diabetes. Some studies even suggest that microbial metabolites can affect the brain and influence our mental health. As we get older, our microbiota continues to change. Studies show that the gut microbiota of older people differs from that of young adults, potentially contributing to ageing-related changes to our immune system and brain function. There's an awful lot still to learn about how the many microorganisms that live with us contribute to our well-being and influence our health. We need a better understanding of why microbes differ between people and how these differences affect our biology. And in particular, we need more studies of microbiomes in non-white populations and from all regions of the world. What is clear is that without these microbes, we wouldn't be here.